Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to always give him the thanks, to always give him the praise, and always give him the glory. Today is the day that the Lord is going to speak to somebody today. Today is the day that the Lord is going to speak to somebody today. He's going to answer your question today because it's something that you have been asking Jesus about. And you've been asking him. You've been asking him. So he heard. He heard everything that you've been asking him. And today my sisters. Today my brothers. He has your answer. For you. Normally I get into all the praise and the worship. But we're going to pray. Then we'll get right into this word. Because God want to give you your answer. What you've been looking for. Today is the day that you will receive your answer. And he's going to give it to you so clear. So picture perfect clear. That you don't even have to question it anymore. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God is coming for you peacefully and humbly. Right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you Heavenly Father God for this chance of a lifetime. I thank you for this word that we got to receive. I thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this powerful message, God, that's going to keep us full. It's going to keep us satisfied. I thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you've done, what you're about to do in our place right now. Oh, Heavenly Father God, there's no place that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, in your sanctuary, Father God, just glorify your name, magnify your name, and always put you in first place. Today is the day that you have made. I'm so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Today is the day, Father God, that you will move mountains out of your sons and your daughter's life. Today is the day that you will give peace, that you will give clarity to your children today. Today is the day, Father God, that your children don't have to ask you the same question anymore, God, because you're about to deliver them the answer that they need. You're about to touch their heart. You're about to open up their eyes. Oh, God, you're about to order their steps right now. Oh, God, allow your presence to be known in this place right now. Allow your love to move through this place right now. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you in your name right now today, pleading with you right now today, Father God, for you to do a new thing in my sister's life, for you to do a new thing in my brother's life. Allow your angels to join with us in praise and worship right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now today on your ministry line, your YouTube channel right now. Heavenly Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now today in my brother's home into my brother's life. Heavenly Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now today in my sister's home into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now today on Jesus' YouTube channel on this platform right now. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now into my sister's home into my sister's life. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. You're inviting right now today in my brother's home to my brother's life right now. I allow all Jesus' children that is watching his sermon right now, who listen to his word right now, catch the Holy Ghost fire through this sermon today. Father God, speak. And your word should never return back forward. Oh God, this is your time. This is your house. This is your house that you built on solid ground. That house that cannot be moved. It cannot be shaken. It sure cannot be bothered. Oh, God, we give you thanks right now. We lift you up right now. We worship you. We praise you. We magnify. And we shout out your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church come together and say, Amen and Amen. My brothers, my sisters, I'm here today to clear some things up. I'm here today to speak the word on what God wants you to hear. And he told me to tell you right now today that they did not get away with it. That person that betrayed you, that person that deceived you, that person that done you wrong, he told me to tell you that they didn't get away with it. That everything has to take place in life. Everything about this word right here we are manifest. That's why this Bible right here is so true. That's why his words are true. That's why his promises are true. That's why Jesus remains so faithful. It's because of this right here. Everything in here, every detail, every direction, 
every word, every promise in this word right here, it has to manifest. So that person that done you wrong, it's already in manifestation right now. It's going down right now. It's taking place right now. And basically what I'm, I'm getting y'all getting y'all to know, what y'all to look at, is God gave me clarity this morning. This morning, I spent a, I spent an extra little more time with Jesus this morning. Because I really wanted to get a clear understanding of what he was trying to tell me. I wanted a clear understanding on what he was trying to show me. And what he showed me this morning was a picture of a rat. I was not understanding why Jesus would show me a rat. As I'm sitting there looking at the rat, I'm confused. I said, Jesus, I'm not understanding what you're showing me. I'm not understanding what you're trying to tell me. What is it? So the more I kept sitting there, he still kept showing me the rat. After about five or ten minutes that went by, I dialed into the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, I'm not understanding. Holy Spirit, enlighten me with this wisdom about this rat. Enlighten me about this knowledge about this rat. Enlighten me about this understanding about this rat. And he said, that rat, they betrayed you. Oh, heavenly Jesus. That rat, they deceived y'all. That rat, they lied on y'all. That rat, they cheated on y'all. That rat, they did, did the most dirty thing to y'all. That rat was part of your assignment. If it wasn't for that rat, you wouldn't have the assignment that you have right now. So that rat was a part of your assignment. It's like Judas was the rat. Judas was a part of Jesus' assignment. So that rat had to be a part of your assignment. That rat had to do what he had to do to you, my sisters. That rat had to do to you what he had to do to you, my brothers. That rat had to do to serving ministry LT the way that he did. That rat had to do to Jesus what he had to do. But Jesus knew the rat. The rat was part of the assignment. We knew the rat, but we overlooked the rat. Because why? We didn't test the rat spirit. But that rat was placed right there for a reason, my sisters. That rat was placed right there for a purpose, my brothers. Because that rat had to do to you so for order your purpose to for your order for your purpose to manifest. That rat had to do what it's supposed to do to you so God can take you and elevate you to the next level. So that rat had to be there. That rat was not there by no accident. That rat was there on purpose because that rat was part of your assignment. It was part of your mission. It was part of your task. It was part of your journey, but it was not part of the blessing. Are you following what I'm saying? I know that rat did you dirty. I know that rat broke your heart. I know that rat broke your trust. I know that rat had you up all times of the night crying and worrying. Yes, that rat did it to me too. Not knowing that that rat was a part of my assignment. Just like Judas was a part of the assignment. If Judas was never part of the assignment, we would never know what things going to manifest in this. This way, he would never manifest it if Judas was not part of the assignment. See, Judas didn't get there on accident. Jesus handpicked that rat. So if Jesus handpicked that rat, don't you think that Jesus handpicked that rat that was assigned to you, that done you wrong? That rat was part of your assignment. Oh, yes, it was. How I know? I'm glad that you asked, my brothers and sisters. Can you please turn your back to Matthew 26? And we're going to read verses 20 through 26. Matthew 20. I mean, Matthew 26. And we're going to read verses 20 through 26. 
And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. See, right now, Jesus has already identified who the rat is. But we know a rat is sneaky. A rat always try to play some off. But Jesus has already identified who the rat is, but the rat don't have no clue who Jesus is talking about. But Jesus knew who the rat was. Listen to this. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after another, surely not our Lord. See, even the rat was sad. Even the rat told Jesus, not me. But Jesus never responded to the rat at that, at that point. Because Jesus already know who the rat is. The rat don't know who Jesus is talking about. But Jesus already know who is the rat. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand to the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the son of man. It will be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, surely not our Lord. Now, do you see how the rat spoke out? Because right now, Jesus has eye contact with the rat. The rat right now is so nervous, and the rat know who Jesus is talking about. So right now, he got to come out and say, it's me, because that is the evil in that rat. We always had a rat that was evil that was part of our assignment. So Jesus knew the rat. That rat was part of your assignment. And we've seen the evil things that that rat was doing to us the whole time. But we never identified why the rat was doing it to us in the first place. Because the rat knew who we was. The rat knew that we had a special assignment. The rat knew that we had a purpose. The rat knew that God's going to take us and elevate us to the next level. If the rat didn't know that, the rat would never have been part of your assignment in the first place, my brothers and sisters. Now, the rat equal cheese because Judas betrayed, betrayed Jesus for 30 shekels. See, right now, he think the cheese that these people are going to give him is the best cheese. Not knowing that Jesus was giving him the best cheese that that rat can ever eat. So that's what a rat do. A rat like to wander around. Once the rat get tired of eating the same cheese, that rat thinks it's other cheese and better cheese out there in part of the world. So right now, Judas is thinking, yes, I've been eating this cheese, but this cheese right here, what they offer me, it looked better than the cheese that Jesus was giving him. So right now, that rat that betrayed us, that rat that deceived us, that rat that lied on us, that rat that cheated on us. See, right now, this rat is thinking that the cheese that they got from us, it thinks going to get some more better cheese out there in the world. That's why I say the grass withers, so does the flower fade. The grass is not green on the other side. But see, according to a rat, a rat is always going to think that the grass is green on the other side until it realizes it's not. It's really not. So right now, Judas, right now is thinking that this, this new cheese is better than what Jesus was giving him. That same person that betrayed us, that same person that lied on us, that same person that cheated on us, they did the same exact thing. They think, oh, we go over here to the, to the north side, they got some good cheese over there. If we go to the east side, it's some good cheese over there. If we go to the west side, it's some good cheese over there. If we go to the south side, it's some good cheese over there. Because that's what they was hearing about the good cheese. But they didn't realize the, good, the best cheese they was eating was the cheese that you was giving them and offering them and blessing them with. Right now, about Judas doing what he's doing, Judas having his mind that he, got, he don't got away with it. 
Are you following what I'm saying? Let's go to Matthew 27. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Matthew 27. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I betrayed innocent blood. Right now, I'm going to stop right there. See, he left the one pack to go hang with the other pack of rats. Because the other pack of rats told him, what can we offer you if you do this for us? See, at that point, Judas was thinking, that rat was thinking, that the cheese that his posse was going to give him was better than the cheese that Jesus was giving him. But one thing about Judas he didn't know, and one thing about a rat, a rat will always turn on each other. Especially when they knew that they got this rat from the Good Haven house. When they knew they got this rat from the other side of the town who don't know no better. When they know that this rat right here is not strong minded, a rat will always turn on each other. They always in cahoots with one another, but eventually when they feel like they can get one out of the circle, it's going to turn on that rat. And that's what's going down right now. Their family member was easy to persuade their son and their daughter away from the person who was looking out for them. Their family member was easy to persuade their son and their daughter of that person who had a godly, fearing house. A family member is easy to persuade their son and their daughter to stay away, to stay away from a search, of, uh, stay away from a person who seek God, who's a God fearing man, who's a God fearing woman. So called friends have the audacity to easy to persuade another friend to stop hanging with this friend because this friend right here is on the right path. This friend right here want to do the right thing. And when they easy to persuade them away from the, from the God friend man, when they easy to persuade them from the God friend woman, when they easy to persuade them from a God, from a, from a, from a lawyer man or a lawyer woman or a faithful man or a faithful woman, and once they easy to persuade them from them, they say, now, we're going to let them hang with us for a moment. We're going to let them get comfortable with us for a moment, but they have no idea that we're going to flip on them. They don't have no idea that the same way that we allow them we allow them to do that to them, what you think they're going to do to us? So before they do it to us, we got to get, oh help me Jesus, we have to get them first. And this is what's going down with Judas right now. See, Judas don't realize what's taking place right now. Now Judas realized what he don't did. And what he don't did, he know he don't mess up. Right now, that person that betrayed you, that lied on you, deceived you, cheated on you, right now, they know they don't messed up because right now, those same rats that was easy to persuade them away from you, those same rats is about to flip the strip on them. Them same rats about to turn their back against them. How I know, I'm glad you asked me. He said, I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They replied, that's your responsibility. Do you see how rats turn on each other? See, Judas couldn't see that in the beginning because he was easy to be persuaded. Their friend couldn't see it in the beginning because he or she was easily to be persuaded. That so-called boyfriend or girlfriend, that husband or wife, couldn't see it then because why? They was too easily to be persuaded. But now when the table has turned, and those same group of rats that told them to leave you, to lie on you, to deceive you, to do your dirty. Now they doing it to them. And the reason I had to do it to them, because they said they did it to them, they're going to do the same thing to us. And before they do it to us, we got to get them and beat them at their own game. So that's why 
it's not going to go down the way that you think it's going down. That's why they can get away with it. Right now, everything they've done to you is taking place right now. It's going down right now because those rats has turned their back on them. Why you think they call you now? Why you think they want to be your friend right now? Why you think they're trying to ease their way back into your life right now? That's what a rat does. When a rat knows what they done done wrong, they always try to come back to that same tunnel to go back to you where the good food was, where the good cheese was. That's what they're doing right now. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now. But there's some rats that's trying to make their way back to you right now. Are you following what I'm saying? So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. Why did Judas hang himself? Because those same rats who he thought was had his back turned on him. Those same rats, those same rats, my brothers and sisters, they was in cahoots with the rat that was assigned to you. Now those same rats had turned their back on that rat that done it to you. Oh yeah, they feeling some type of way right now. Oh, they ain't they feelings right now. Oh yeah, they hurting right now. Why do you think they're trying to find their way back to you right now? It's because they know they have sinned and they know they have done wrong because right now there's nothing going good and there's nothing going right in their life right now today. That's why they're so upset right now. That's why they're reaching out, reaching out because they want to talk to you right now. Because who they thought was down with them has turned their back on them. And rats are like busybodies. They always in cahoots with one another. They always want to talk about what's going on. So you got to remember and recall when Judas met with these Pharisees, they were at the table having a discussion about Jesus. And the only way they can get Jesus, they had to find the weaker rat. And who was the weaker rat? Judas. Who was the weaker rat? That friend. Who was the weaker rat? That so-called husband of yours. Who was the weaker, the weaker rat? That so-called wife of yours. Who was the weaker rat? That so-called boyfriend or girlfriend. How I know? I'm glad you asked me that too. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 11. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 11. If you have it, let the church say amen. Amen. We hear that some among you are idle. They're not busy. They are busy bodies. Busy bodies are people who have too much time on their hand, who have so much, so much hate and they angry about you. They miserable. Misery love company, company love misery. So the Pharisees, they were miserable and they wanted some company. And the only way they can get their company, they had to go search out who's the weaker rat. Who can we get on our side? Who can we get that we can persuade them to turn on the one who was faithful, who was loyal, who was feeding them, who was taking care of them? So they knew it was Judas. Their family member knew it was their son. Their family member knew it was their daughter. Their friend knew it was the other friend. That's why they were so easy to persuade them. Why do you think that their friend was so easy to leave you the way they did? Why do you think that their husband was so easy to leave you the way he did? Why do you think it was so easy for their wife to leave you the way that they did? Is because they were hanging around miserable people. And they needed some company. And the only way they can get that company, they had to get someone that was weaker, who was not faith. They didn't have strong faith at all. That's what they came and got. That's what they came and got. So yes, their rat was part of your assignment. It was part of your assignment. Amen. Let's finish this thing off at 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 11 through 13. And we're going to tell you why everything got to manifest. Everything that you went through, everything that you encountered, with that rat, it has to manifest through this. So what that rat did to you, it had to do to you because it had to be part of your life and your purpose. It had to manifest so when Jesus going to elevate you, that rat was part of that process. 
See, if you didn't have it going on the way that you had it going on, my brothers and sisters, there would never been a rat a part of your assignment. If you were God was not about to elevate you, you would never have a rat a part of your assignment. If you weren't anointed the way that you was anointed, if you weren't chosen the way that you was chosen, you would never have a rat that was part of your assignment. So Jesus had to have that rat so Jesus could be elevated because of his anointing. I had to have that rat because I was chosen, because my anointing and what Jesus about to elevate me to, what Jesus about to take me to, that's the same reason why you had to go through what you had to go through. So even though that we remain faithless, Jesus still remained faithful because why? Every word in this Bible, every promise in this Bible, it has to take place and it has to manifest. Right now, Jesus is telling me to tell you right now today, my brothers and my sisters, they did not get away with it. It's like Judas. If Judas didn't get away with it, and he was the rat, Joe Judas, a.k.a. that little rat, is not going to get away with it either. Because why? It's taking place right now. And the only reason why it's taking place right now, because Jesus had to know that your hand was off of it. Jesus had to know that your hand was out of the cookie jar. And once Jesus knew that your hand was off that property, was off their assignment, that he knew that your hand was off that cookie jar, now, he said, now it can manifest. Now it can go down the way it's supposed to go down. Now it can take place the way it's supposed to take place. How I know? I'm glad you asked me. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to read verse 11 through 13. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he also he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot disown himself. Because why? This right here has to take place. Even though we remain faithless, that we give up and we blame God. God, how can you let this happen to us? God, they got away with it. And he said they didn't get away with it. You think they got away with it. Even though that you even though that you think that they got away with it, I promise you that they did not get away with it. And see, we all think that. Whenever that rat or that Judas do what they do to us, we always say, Jesus, how in the world can you allow this to happen? Jesus, why you let this do this? Why you let this happen to us like this? See, that's when we that's when we remain faith we, we remain unfaithful. And that's when Jesus kicked in, he remained faithful. See, we remain faithless, but he remained faithful because he is telling you, no matter what, this right here has to manifest. It has to manifest. It has to take place. It has to take its course because he cannot disown himself, even though we do. At some times. My point is, Jesus remains faithful no matter what. He remains faithful. Number two, it has to manifest. Number three, without the busy bodies, without the rat, that's why it's going to take place. I don't know who this word is for today. I don't know who Jesus is talking to today, but he's telling me to tell you right now today. They have not gotten away with it. It's going down right now. It's taking place right now this very second. It's taking place right now this very moment. And if you believe it, and if you receive it, give God a, give God some praise in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us, AOT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on him because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Always continue to trust him. Always continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. 
It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.